Hello dear students, in this video we will learn about complex 3 of electron transport chain. In my previous videos I have discussed about complex 1 and I have mentioned that the ultimate product of complex 1 is the CoQH2 that means EVQNone, dihydroquinone. And the complex 2, the end product is also CoQH2 and one protein called ETFQO, I have already uh, mentioned the full name of this uh, protein, ETFQO, it is the also same product that is a CoQH2. So the complex 3, the name of the complex 3 relates with this CoQH2. So complex 3 is called CoQH2 cytochrome C reductage okay now you can see I have mentioned in my previous videos that the first name implies that this product will be oxidized and the last product will be reduced so here CoQH2 that means the dihydroquinone will be oxidized and the cytochrome C will be reduced so let me draw the complex 3 structure complex 3 structure looks like this this is the complex 3 and what happens here this CoQH2 from this complex 1 or from the complex 2 or from the ETFQ comes here and release electron that pass to the ultimate electron acceptor in case of uh, complex 3 is the cytochrome C. Let's suppose this is the cytochrome C. Okay. And the cytochrome C actually eventually uh, go through this electron transport chain into the complex 4. Now to understand the mechanism behind this electron transportation by this complex 3, you have to know one cycle that is very important is called Q cycle. Q cycle. This cycle is actually so important for our life that it is evolution evolutionary conserved in all the domains of our uh, life like in case of bacteria, in case of plants, in case of animals. Every organisms have this Q cycle and this Q cycle occurs in the complex 3. So what is Q cycle and the mechanism of this electron transport chain I will tell you in this video. So to understand Q cycle there are two steps you have to understand step 1 and step 2. So let's suppose this is the inter inner membrane inner mitochondrial membrane okay and this is the complex 3 this is also the complex 3 so what happens here from the complex 1 or complex 2 or from the etfq coq actually comes in this complex site okay complex in this complex in this complex there are two coq that means ubq non binding site you have to remember this this is this space this region is called intermembrane space intermembrane space and this is the matrix region i have already mentioned here matrix so what happens in the intermembrane space region there is a binding site for the ubiquinone and in the in the matrix region also there is a another region for ubiquinone binding site the first region is called q0 the second region is called q1 qi the same is also here there is a two ubiquinone binding site and this actually play the helps in the q cycle so this is the q0 and this is the QI okay so what happens at first one CoQH2 this uh, green signal means CoQH2 comes in this site this Q0 site at first then it releases two electrons it releases because we know this 
CoQ is to have two electrons and two protons. So it releases two electrons and at the same time it releases two protons in this intermembrane space. So this CoQ is to release two protons and two electrons simultaneously. Now in this complex three, there is a ferrous surface cluster. There is a ferrous surface sulfur, ferrous sulfur cluster that receive one electron at a time. This is the reason where this Q cycle actually works. You have to understand this. This CoQ H2 that is generated from this complex 1, complex 2, or DTFQO have two electrons, high energy electrons and two protons. Two protons actually released in the intermembrane space that actually generate the proton motive force. Now, it also released two high energy electrons. But the problem is here the ferrous sulfur cluster can accept one electron at a time. And it this ferrous sulfur cluster then release the single electron to another protein called let's suppose this blue color is the cytochrome c1 there is a cytochrome c1 this ferrous sulfur cluster then transfer the electron so the electron let's suppose this electron actually go to this ferrous sulfur cluster from the ferrous sulfur cluster it go to the cytochrome c1 and ultimately it is received it is received by the cytochrome c this is the cytochrome c so the electron then move from the cytochrome c1 to the cytochrome c this cytochrome c also can take one electron at a time so it actually take one electron at a time now the question is why this q cycle is required and it is so important that all the animal all the living domains have this q cycle you have to understand this thing when this coq is to means dihydroquinone release the two electrons one electron is accepted by the ferrous sulfur cluster here is a very important fact about the structure of the protein that has this uh, ferrous sulfur cluster this is called rsk protein the protein that has this fes cluster we will call rsk protein this protein has a hinge like structure let's suppose these two electrons are present in this q0 sites now the fes clusters have a hinge like region like this region it can accept one electron and the hinge region changes conformation to deliver the electron to other site so you have to understand this there is two electrons this fes cluster can touch attached with this electron can receive this electron and then it actually change the conformation to release this electron to the cytochrome c1 so it changes these locations at that time one electron remains there remains there if this electron this high energy electron remains there for a little time because to come again to that site to come again that site to receive this electron the ferrous sulfur cluster should release the electron to the cytochrome c1 but this is too long for a high energy electron to remain there you have to understand this fact very clearly there is a two electron one electron accepted by ferrous sulfur cluster so let's suppose this two electron there is two electrons one electron is accepted by this ferrous sulfur cluster then it the hinge region of this protein actually changes uh, structure conformations so that this electron can be transferred to the cytochrome c1 and at that time this one electron this high energy electron is remains there and if one high energy electron remains for a certain period of time it will release its energy so it is a total loss it will be a total loss loss of this whole mechanism these proteins are working its best to give the highest proton motive force to generate the highest protein motive force that will generate the atp if one electron loses in its energy then it will this this uh, total electron transport will actually lost the potentiality so for that reason the single electron that electron that is present actually transferred to another cytochrome this is called bl cytochrome so, so there are two type of cytochrome cytochrome c1 
cytochrome B L. Then the cytochrome B L release the electron to another cytochrome called cytochrome B H. So the second atom actually actually comes from this Q zero side to the B L to B H and ultimate to the Q I side where a ubiquinone is present you have to understand this where the ubiquinone so this dot means q not the qh2 qh2 means dihydroquinone this q is means it is oxidized in conditions so one q comes here and take this electron and becomes take the electron and become semi ubiquinone you have to understand this semi ubiquinone so as this ferrous sulfur cluster and the cytochrome c1 and the cytochrome c can take one electron at a time to uh, maintain the energy to uh, uh, bypass this electron they actually take the electron to the bl cytochrome bl to the bh and ultimately to the qi side this electron is then received by semi ubiq uh, sorry uh, ubiquinone to make semi ubiquinone okay in the second step the same thing occurs another another coqh2 comes it releases two electrons high energy electrons it releases two protons okay so this is the qh2 that release two electrons two protons then one fes ferrous sulfur cluster take one electron it donates the it donates the single electron to the cytochrome c1 and ultimately this electron actually received by cytochrome c and the cytochrome c actually gets reduced this is the whole story very simple okay this is a very simple story now another time this electron will bypass from bh bl cytochrome bl to bh and then to this side to this side and i have mentioned here that there is already a semi ubiquinone present that has one electron already that has one electron only now the semi ubiquinone take the another electron and two proton two proton from the matrix side and make and make the this co this is the qh2 means coq so coqh2 that means dihydroquinone the semi ubiquinone becomes the dihydro quinone this is very important okay so you have to summarize this thing very uh, very clearly this complex three actually lies in this mechanism what happens here why q cycle is important that lies in this uh, in this section as the ferrous sulfur cluster has a hinge region it can take one electron at a time it can deliver one electron at a time to the cytochrome c1 it cannot receive the both or two electrons at a time at that time this electron high energy electron cannot remain for a longer period this uh, timing is so long that it cannot remain here it will release its uh, energy as a heat that will be the total loss for this electron transport gen. so it bypass from another to save the energy to save the process uh, to the uh, cytochrome bl and bh and ultimately to the another side ultimately if you calculate this thing if i calculate the total thing what we have found that maybe you will find that there are two coq are required because for the step one there is coq coqh2 comes so one coq h2 for the one coq h2 for the one coq h2 for the first step and second coq h2 for the first step so there are two coq h2 actually required but no as Two coqh2 is actually here, but one coqh2 is generated in this qi side. 
one coq is to actually generate it so if we calculate this two, two step at, at this two step because this two step actually make this one cycle make the one cycle you have to understand this here one electron actually passing and two protons are actually released we are calculating this all uh, mechanism as the now as a new currency we we take atp as a currency but before the um, generation of atp we will take the count of protons as our currency because that proton actually create the proton motive force and we, that will generate the atp so here two hydrogen atoms uh, protons are actually released for one electron to be passed through this way and here also one electron passed through and it released two electrons so for two electrons two electrons we actually getting uh, four pro protons outside four protons outside that means in the intermembrane space okay so that is actually two protons per one electron this is the theory two protons per electron so one electron pass two protons are released as i have mentioned in my class that one coq is two is generated from the one uh, nadh or the fadh2 so this coq is two contains two electrons this contains two electrons so for one electron if two protons are released then for another two protons will be released so the summation will be four protons so for this way for the uh, by the complex three four protons are actually released four protons are released and this is very important that the q cycle is present in all the domains and you you can see here maybe two coq is to is required because there is, there is no way to accept two per, two electrons at a time so it bypass one electron and generate coq is to another time now this coq is to that is generated in the qi side can take part in this reaction again so you have to understand this thing q cycle hope this video will help you now in my next video i will make a separate class on complex four and that will be in the of our electron transport chain then i will talk about how atp is generated by the atp synthesis so thank you